G'day guys, Dom here and welcome to week three of the Friday Blade Drop. I'll bring up Michael Jackson hand first off. Um, unfortunately yesterday I buzzed my finger with the edge of my disc sander and uh, wasn't the worst cut I've ever had in the workshop but it's probably top ten. Um, when it happened I looked at the finger and I thought I cut my fingernail off. It's still on there luckily enough and I'm trying to keep it that way. Um, yeah, it's starting to turn nasty colours so hopefully I'll, I'll keep the fingernail. Anyway, so knives. Um, this week I started off by finishing up the, what was it, the Marivas build. Now, this is the DV Blades belt knife. Um, I've been meaning to do a belt knife design for years and years and years now. And this is actually based off the cloaker design that I did a while ago. You guys remember I did a modified cloaker and I said basically I want to make this as a longer belt knife. And that was essentially the granddaddy for the Marivas knife. Now, Marivas or Moribus, not quite sure how to pronounce it, it's Latin. It loosely translates to adventurer, according to Google anyway. The goal behind this was I wanted to make a lightweight knife for camping all that sort of stuff. So if you look at the knife, you'll see that the first thing I did was I wanted to add this big front edge up here, that sort of raise, that gives you room on a cutting board to chop up your vegetables and all that sort of stuff. Because when I was camping, the thing I'd use my knife for most was food prep, to be honest. So I'd be like chopping up carrots and all that stuff on a cutting board and I'd be usually using like a Swiss Army knife or something and it wasn't really the best option. Um, at least with this, you've got this big front edge there, gets the knuckles up off the table so you can use it almost like a kitchen knife. The, the whole goal essentially was like have a, an outdoor slash kitchen knife that can do all your camp tasks essentially. Um, you'll see that there's sort of a, a negative angle to the blade and that's to give you more leverage when you're cutting. So you can kind of get your, uh, your power grip and really get deep cuts when you're whittling and all that sort of good stuff. So I did three of these. First one you'll see is in the, the green, it is in Forest Green G10 with Toxic Green Liners and Toxic Green G10 pens. Not quite sure what this G10 is, it sort of grinds with differently regular G10, but um, works well for pin materials and I'm quite liking it, might make do it for some more builds. Um, that's just so much blade finish in this guy and a rock solid Kydex sheath. Next up we've got this other one in uh, Cam's Mikata, we've got Brian Cam's Mikata on the handles. Um, as well as uh, some stainless steel tubes as handle pins and an access to blade again. And last up we have this guy here with black cam Makata and brown cam Makata pins. And you'll see all of these have seal numbers one to three. Um, now these are all gone. I've only got this guy left and the only reason I've got this guy is because I'm waiting for the payment on this guy before it gets shipped out. I'm doing another batch of Marebus knives very soon. Um, I've got a big sheet of 12C27, which is very similar to ABL. I'll be dropping off at Waterjet probably early May. So if you want a Marebus off me, hit me up. Um, you'll have custom handles, custom blade finish, pretty much. Um, whatever you want, pretty much, if you want to have a uh, custom made Marebus and all. Um, so that's the Marebus knife. Uh, next up, I got this Primus finished. I've got G10 handles, nice and thin, as I like to do them on my liner locks. The frames in this are bee blasted, just to give it that nice matte finish. Titanium pocket clip and titanium pivot that have both been anodized. A rock pattern on the flats, and this is actually the first knife I've done with a sort of opening hole like this. And I've got to say, man, I'm loving these opening holes. So much so, and then I'm probably going to be doing this as a standard feature for my Primus knives on Gen 2. The reason I didn't do this in the past was I didn't have a mill, but now that I have a mill, it's just easier and better. So that's going to be going out next week, I'm just waiting to get paid for that one. Next up we've got Surgeons. Now Surgeons are one of my favourite knife designs that I do. I've made probably hundreds of these over the years um, and these knives get used and abused like you would not believe. I get photos all the time of Surgeons being used for some horrible shit. Shit that as a knife maker makes my hair go white. Like I've seen people opening cans with these things, throwing these things, batoning with these things, just beating the crap out of them. All of which I do not recommend to use for them, that's not what they're designed for, but they're a rock solid little knife and they, they can do some serious work. I do this with Elite Cerakote. According to Cerakote, it is more impact resistant, more wear resistant, and uh, a lot slipperier than regular Cerakote, which is, um, which is great for these guys. It's just a little upgraded a few years ago to make them a better product. So this and the next batch will be the last two batches in Nitro V. In the future, we move into probably D2. Um, Nitro V is a rock solid steel, the issue is it's a, it's a coil steel, so it's essentially made from the factory in these big coils of steel and gets unrolled. The problem with that is that the steel tends to remember how it was when it was originally made. When you go to heat treat it, it has a tendency to kind of warp and twist and all that sort of nasty shit. 
Um, so hopefully when I move to D2, it'll make life a little bit easier just from a manufacturing standpoint. I don't have to straighten as many knives and uh, a lot of people also prefer D2 because it's a little bit more wear resistant and with the coating, you shouldn't have to worry about the, the rust aspect too much. Um, so yeah, that's the surgeons, rock solid little knives. I've got six of these on the website. So last week I asked you guys if you wanted to see the seal marked on the knives and I got a very passionate response for yes and I got a very passionate response for no. And the split was about 50-50, so uh, that kind of left me in the situation where I didn't know what the fuck to do. So what I've done is I took the th six in this batch and I split them in the middle. The first three are steel, are marked with the steel and the serial number, and the second three I just got the serial number. So all six of these on the website has an option to get which one you want, and I'll see essentially which one sells out first. And uh, from there we'll be able to get some data and uh, basically make a better product in the future, you know? And finally, I've got lanyard beads. So because I busted my finger yesterday, I didn't want to go too hard and uh, risk, you know, wrecking it some more. So I essentially knocked out some lanyard beads. Um, I did a few of these a couple days ago and they sold out almost instantly. So I did another batch. I've got about 30 of these in stock. Um, most of these are actually getting put aside for the Melbourne Knife Show coming up. Um, I always like to have little stuff like that for knife shows and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's just... I don't know, the way I look at it is I want everyone to come to a knife show and have the opportunity to buy something at least because it's very easy to walk into a knife show and get, you know, sticker shock. So I like to bring a lot of stuff under $50 just to kind of have something that everyone can buy, you know? And that's worked out well for me over the years and, and it's usually paid for my table most of the time. So uh, I bring a bunch of these to the Melbourne Knife Show and I've also got them on my website for 12 bucks a piece shipped anywhere in Australia. I'm also ship them internationally, but I'm gonna be honest, if you buy them, if you just buy one of these and ship it internationally, the shipping is gonna be brutal. Um, probably more than the beat itself. And uh, I think that's just about it, guys. Um, a lot more videos are gonna be coming soon. I've actually got two videos that are rendered, uploaded, everything on YouTube. Um, one of them is gonna be dropping tomorrow, and the next is gonna be dropping Monday. So they're scheduled uploads, and um, yeah, you'll see, especially on the one Monday, that I've kind of figured out a few things with editing so they don't look as dodgy. Um, and I'm really trying to step up my video game recently. Hope you guys have noticed, but um, yeah, I'm trying to get to a point where I can upload two, three days a week and really get this, um, get YouTube cranking again. All right, so we're back. Uh, speaking of better video quality, I think the camera needs to be replaced too. For whatever reason, it shat its pants the last 30 seconds of footage and uh, basically the footage is all gone. So I'm back doing an outro. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate it, guys. New videos are dropping very, very soon, and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.